Okay, time for a new series on YouTube. It's called CRNA Storytime. So, um, on Instagram, I have been doing something called a Get Ready With Me um, for some of the cases that I've been doing. So that's been kind of interesting. I've only done one on Reels. I have another one coming for an Awake Fiber Optic, um, which I will also have a story time for. All right, so anyways, the story time that I'm going to do first is when um, my anesthesia machine stopped working in the middle of my case. <laughs> And I did my machine check, right? Obviously prior to my case. And the first machine check that I did, it um, had a malfunction. The error that it showed me was an emergency inlet um, flash at the top and we used the Draker's here. And I was like, okay, that's weird. I just made sure all the connections were tight, the oxygen was tight, cracked open the uh, oxygen tanking, uh, tank in the back um, and redid this, the check again and it passed. But still in my mind, I was like, hmm, that's kind of weird. Um, if I can find the pictures, I'll put it in this video, or I may just like upload this, upload this as it is. Um, so we start the case, and the machine like starts to have these errors. Um, so it was a general intubated patient. Um, was using SIVO, gonna switch to Des later. Um, everything, and so I flipped the patient um, to from obviously from manual to pressure support. I believe is what I um, used that day and so it was working at first and then the sh machine started having those errors that it did during the first machine check and i was just like okay this is weird like what's going on um i was not able to deliver a positive pressure ventilator because i flipped the patient off of um the pressure support um or pressure control ventilation and tried to deliver a positive uh breath positive pressure breath i wasn't able to do so and so, like, that's, like, one of the worst nightmares of CRNA. You can't deliver a breath on your own when you want to, when your patient's connected to the vent. So, um, bag was not inflated when I pushed the uh, O2 auxiliary button to inflate it. And so, I'm like, okay, no. Um, my patient's um, sedated, obviously, and paralyzed. But at this point, I'm the patient is not receiving consistent tidal volumes and with the anesthetic gas that's supposed to be going with it so i'm watching my mac get down to like 0.9 which is like okay still anesthetized but it was at 1.1 prior to that so i'm like okay the machine is not delivering their breaths it's like messing up kind of like showing me that the patient was starting to take spontaneous breaths and it was just like a whole mess so i immediately um call overhead um, to have someone come in the room. You, rule number one, get your people, get your staff, okay? Um, and I knew, obviously that takes time, but that is one of the verbal things that you can do on your own as the surgery is still going on. As you're still behind uh, the drapes, you can have your OR nurse go and get help. And so, and go page people like anesthesia to OR, whatever. Um, at the same time this was happening, I, I always keep propofol in line to push if I need to, like what, for whatever reason the patient starts to wake up, malfunctions like this. So I was able to quickly uh, turn off the gas and, um, and I guess I, I guess that's not really the same time that I did. So first thing that I did actually was to get my ambu bag, which was on the side. Right, so my patient still had a mag of 0.9. So I grabbed my ambu bag, uh, connected it to the oxygen, switched my patient from the vent, connected to the ambu bag so I could deliver a positive press uh, pressure uh, breath. Um, at the same time, or I guess right after, I pushed some propofol. Um, obviously, I'm looking at my blood pressure because you're always like analyzing everything. So prior to me pushing the propofol, um, I didn't have a bis monitor on, so I didn't um, know. It's another. Um, way that you can tell how asleep a patient is, but I looked at the blood pressure um, at this point in time also The Mac was not showing up So I was not able to see how much gas was being delivered to my patient and how much the FI to FA was I was not able to see any of that information. It actually wasn't even analyzing the gas anymore. So I was like, okay um, I Need to get this patient converted to a TIVA. So connect to the ambu bag started the TIVA um, which is total IV anesthetic by pushing propofol um, and so I had known prior like when I was putting the patient to sleep about how much it took to put them um, uh, to sedate them and I will always remember I had a preceptor actually ask me 
um, like what would happen if everything shut down and all your machines stopped working and you just had your blood pressure cuff that was working um, or you just had a timer and you know the blood pressure cuff goes off every three minutes and I forgot the math problem I'm gonna think about it and like put it on Instagram or something that he gave me but it was like how much what would be the infusion rate um, to get I think a hundred um, mics per uh, kg I can't remember but it was like if you pushed this amount of drug every three minutes um, what would be the infusion rate for your patient and um, I forgot the exact measurement but I knew that giving this certain amount of medication every three minutes would give me an infusion rate but I didn't have to get that far because I had called my anesthesia team and they had come in um, I had multiple hands in the room at that point I was able to have someone help me draw up uh, or um, run a propofol infusion line to start to really start the TIVA um, obviously the anesthesia machine couldn't be fixed in the middle of the case so I ended up um, ventilating the patient with an ambu bag for the rest of the case which is another hour um, so yeah that's what happened and that's those are the steps that I took when my anesthesia machine stopped working in the middle of my case so I wanted to share the story time because one you never know and in school you're trained like what if what if what if and like you're like okay whatever it's a machine it's not gonna happen but like it happened to me and um, all the times where your preceptor asking you like what if this happened what would you do like that's those scenarios are possible and it happened to me I'm a new grad and um, it was nice to hear that my, my supervisor you know say you did everything right and good job very swift um, and I get a lot of questions. I remember asking these questions about like, what do you do and how do you um, make these decisions so quickly? I'm afraid if da, da 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 And guys, like you're trained to do this and things just kick in. You know, you know that you need to keep your patient asleep because they're open on the table. Um, you know that you need to breathe for them because you have a, one, um, you took away the drive to breathe. They're not, they're not spontaneously breathing. So you need to deliver oxygen. And so the first things that you're doing, you're looking around, you're like, okay, ambu bag. I can connect it to oxygen. I can deliver a breath how I want to. Um, and then you're like, okay, sedation, because I'm no longer delivering sedation through the anesthesia machine. So TIFA, IV, propofol, whatever it is, let me get that in line. I had it in line already, luckily, but I always have extra. So um, I wanted to share maybe that this could help somebody get somebody's wheels turning. Um, and also just so you guys know that this could happen. Um, let me know if you like the story time, if you want me to share more, because I do have more. <laughs> um, I know that it's almost been a year since I graduated from school and almost a year since I had my CRNA license, which is crazy to think because uh, this year went by so quickly, but I've learned so much in this first year. Um, yeah, let me know if you want me to share more of these story times. So definitely subscribe, give me a thumbs up and like this video. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.